بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the carolinamuslims.com my name is Ahmad Shakur, and my guest this evening is Michelle Ashfaq, who is originally from Albany, New York. She's married, a mother of three, and a first grade teacher with the Charlotte Islamic Academy in Charlotte, North Carolina. Michelle has consented to share with us her thoughts about converting to Islam, her motivation for doing so, and her concerns as a Muslim. Michelle, I want to thank you for joining us this afternoon in our little conversation. Uh, we've got a few, few things to talk about this afternoon, but I wanted to start by just simply asking you, how were you introduced to Islam? I look back now and I can say that I think I was introduced in a very subtle way, even in childhood. Um, when I think about when I attended Catholic school and I was so drawn to the stories of the prophets, um, some of them being Isa salam and Yuna alayhi salam. Um, but I think it started from them, just the fascination of over there, somewhere in the Middle East. Um, but I was originally, really started hearing about Islam and learning about it through my husband, who, through his character and his good example in ways, um, in teaching me etiquettes and cleanliness, and before I even converted, he just... Uh, taught me a lot of things and then I started reading Islamic books that were sent over from Pakistan from my father-in-law and I started reading and that's how I started to just get a feel for what Islam was. Okay. Before converting to Islam did you consider other religions or was Islam what you wanted to do? Before converting to Islam I went through a phase of just not knowing anymore what I wanted to do as far as um, faith and prayer because I had been raised Catholic and I had been attending um, Baptist church with my grandparents due to circumstances and I was going to both places to worship and then when I hit like when I was about 17, 18 something happened with me where I just one day I went to go to church to the Catholic church and I just something just told me don't go inside and I just felt like every Sunday I just started getting late and things would happen like things would be in my path to stop me from going and when I look back now it's amazing that it happened for a reason that I was just so confused and I knew nothing about Islam at all I knew nothing about any other religion because I was naive I, I grew up in a very small town with my grandparents in southern West Virginia and I only knew Catholic Church, Baptist Church, that's all that I knew. Well tell me Michelle, um, now that you are a Muslim and you've been a Muslim now for 12 years, a married woman, how does Islam make a difference in your life? It has made um, the most tremendous difference in my life, like there's no words to explain. The peace that you feel with Islam and I think it's also a connection that you have between you and God. You say Allah. Um, it, there's just words that are just, I cannot find the words. I've, I've thought about that question, like how could I put it into words? But I will say one of the most powerful things would have to be as far as reading the Holy Quran because of the knowledge and the guidance that it provides. Any question that you have, there's an answer. If you have a question before you start reading the Holy Quran, somehow it's when you turn to the page you will read it and the answer is there and it's a healing and it says in the Quran that it's a healing to the breast of the believers for any emotional sickness or physical sickness but I would say the Quran definitely had a huge impact with me you mentioned your former Christian life tell me a little bit about what you thought about Islam uh, before becoming a Muslim and what does it signify to you today? Before um, converting I had really not known anything up until like I said when I had met my former would have been my husband that time and started reading about um, the books about becoming a Muslim. What attracted you 
to the religion of Islam. Um, the simplicity of it, the simplicity of Islam, that that really attracted me. Um, and knowing that the Quran, that I can open it and I can understand what I'm reading. Because when, you, when I was going to the Catholic Church, we didn't have Bibles or books where we could open and read and understand what we are reading. We had to listen to the priest, whatever sermon he was giving, and we had to take for, you know, face value what he was saying. And there were many times I would question things, and I still remember one of the things I had questioned so deeply was, there were two things I had questioned. One was, they want you to have confession in a Catholic church. And I remember my mother was pushing me, you have to go for confession, you must go for confession. And I was like, confession for what? You have to go to the priest and you have to tell him all the sins that you did. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was very strange for me. Why well, have to go and tell this man what I did? I know he's a priest, right. but he's not my father. Right. Still at a young age, I knew something was not right with that. So we had a bit of an argument. And pretty much I told him I don't have any big sins to confess. And he looked at me very strange. I said, why should I go to you? Can I not pray to God directly? Yes. And he had no answer for me. Right. He said, my daughter, just go and do the rosary, Hail Mary's. That was his answer for me. Okay. And the other question that I had to really question was, if you say that if we don't believe in Isa, Islam, or Jesus as a savior, what about the people that came from Ibrahim, Islam? What about those people that followed him okay. before Isa came? You know, are you telling me that if I don't believe this way, that I will go to the hellfire? So there are a lot of things I was questioning. What about those people? He was a good prophet. They followed uh, him as well. So these were the two big questions that I had. Their answers were not satisfying for you? No. There didn't seem to be any logical answer for those questions. It must have been a very frustrating time for you spiritually. It was. I think the most frustrating time was when I had not met my husband and I really did not know what to do, where to go to worship. And there was a whole year of just like drifting, questioning God. Why is this happening to me? Why I cannot go to the church? I was baptized in that church. I loved going to the Catholic church. I loved everything about it. I was probably the only person who would stay and talk to the priest and talk to any of the nuns, I would stay with them. I had even wanted to be a nun when I was small. There are right. pictures of me taking a shirt and pulling it over my head. Is I still right? have pictures. Because okay. I told my mom I want to be a nun when I grow up. I, I don't want to get married. I just want to be a nun. And I was so devoted that way. How are those issues resolved for you now that you are a Muslim? How are you getting those questions answered now? Um, definitely, I will say, when you learn about Islam, like how you are to live as a human being, that every question you have or any problem that you face, we have the hadiths of our holy prophets, Muhammad, peace be upon him. To me, hadiths are such a wonderful uh, book of knowledge to have on how to deal with problems that we have every day that we face. This I could not find in the Christian faith. Another thing is our Salat, that we pray five times a day, and how significant that is, because this keeps you focused. If you think about the five times, you know, to wake up early in the morning, sacrifice, that I'm doing this for God, and I, I want my sins to be forgiven for the whole day. So this is why, this makes a big difference. And the fasting, and to think about the poor people, to really fast, to truly feel hungry, and to feel like I'm making the sacrifice, you know, for God Almighty, I'm doing this um, for Him and Him alone, and you know, zakats, giving money, and constantly being reminded about these the importance of these things. The difficulty I'm interested in the process of transitioning from Christianity to Islam. Was that process difficult for you? What were some of the hurdles that you had to overcome? For example, fasting. However, fasting is also uh, very endorsed in the Catholic Church, is it not? 